in Maharashtra University of Management, Iowa, USA. He has finished his PhD from Cornell University, New York, and his Bachelor of Science from the University of Washington, Seattle, Washington. It's a pleasure to be here today to speak with you on uh, the. We're going to be looking at the application of biotechnology, of molecular biology, in understanding uh, medicinal plants, and uh, really how this can be used to benefit uh, medicinal plants. Now, molecular or biotechnology is a very broad term. Uh, it uh, applies uh, the, the simple definition, the broad definition, is using biological systems to meet humanity's needs. Very broad, and if you think about it, traditionally, humanity has used biotechnology, according to this definition, in many ways. Think of the yogurt we had for lunch, or the bread, or the vinegar, or cheese. All of these are fermentation processes that, in fact, fit in the category of biotechnology. Um, uh, plant and animal breeding, these are really uh, taking the genetic resources of nature and adjusting them to, uh, to really meet the needs of humanity for food, for other functions. If you uh, think of it from this perspective, agriculture itself is a biotechnology. And certainly, in the context of Ayurveda, the use of herbs, of medicinal plants, for improving health, for balancing the physiology, for uh, elongating life, all of these things fit into the category of uh, biotechnology. Now, in this day and age, we often think of biotechnology more in terms of modern, sort of fancy, uh, high-tech approaches. And yes, there are uh, applications of modern biotechnology that are useful in, 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 um, in, in Ayurveda. Now, what I'd like to do is to, to um, consider modern biotechnology and how is it useful and how might it be problematic for our uh, field of iron day? So uh, modern biotechnology is uh, the use of scientific knowledge of living systems to generate products or services intended to benefit humanity. And I put intended in there for a very specific purpose. And that's because, remember, we're talking here about objective uh, science that uses the, um, the Western approaches in science, the objective approaches. And this appro these approaches often give rise to significant unintended side effects in addition to the intended effects of those technologies. And so we have to always consider these technologies in terms of the full range of their impacts. Now, I'm just going to give you some examples of modern biotechnology. Uh, the first is uh, drugs, hormones, enzymes, and other compounds that can be, be made using living systems. Uh, interferon is a peptide hormone that's used in, uh, in, uh, in activating the immune system. There's human growth hormone, which is used to balance uh, certain things. Uh, there are other peptide hormones that are used to uh, help people who have um, after chemotherapy and these sorts of uh, treatments. Um, there's enzyme replacement therapy. Gaucher's disease is a, uh, is a, is a genetic disease. Uh, you can use biotechnology to produce a hormone that can be used to, uh, to um, help people with this very serious disease. Uh, biotechnology can be used to make vitamins, amino acids, and a range of other um, useful compounds of that sort. 
uh, biotechnology can also be used in diagno diagno diagnostics. Um, uh, for instance, BRCA1 and BRCA2 are two genes that have markers that allow you to diagnose, on the basis of those markers, diagnose susceptibility to breast cancer in women. You can also identify pathogens. For instance, you can detect whether a tick is carrying Lyme's disease, or whether uh, you can identify what kind of flu an individual has based on these genetic methods. Uh, you can, there's a new field called personalized medicine, where you look at the genetic background of an individual, and on that basis, determine whether, it, that, uh, whether certain drugs would be beneficial or not. There's also DNA fingerprint analysis, which can be used to identify individuals um, or uh, genetic relationships. Is this person the, um, the son or the daughter of these two people, for instance? Uh, you can also, these can be used in medicine, in forensics, in the food industry, in agriculture. But this is all Western science and Western technology. Um, there's one area of, uh, so, so when we ask the question, how does modern biotechnology impact Iron Bay, there are a couple conclusions. The first is that traditional biotechnology is central to Iron Bay. And you, you might say that Iron Bay is a traditional biotechnology in that sense. Um, uh, and we could say that there are certain branches of modern biotechnology, which we'll talk about in a minute, that can be applied and benefited to um, IR Bay. But there's also one branch of biotechnology, genetic engineering, which holds significant risks for IR Bay. Um, but before we talk about that, we can talk a minute about modern biotechnology's benefits. Um, in fact, I'm going to talk quickly about the genetic engineering and then come back to this. Um, uh, if we, if we um, look at genetic engineering, this can be used as a research tool to learn more about living systems. And it's a very powerful and useful tool. Um, it can also be used as a tool for, or a technology for producing new drugs in industrial feedstocks. In fact, some of those hormones that I mentioned earlier and vitamins and these and amino acids are produced through genetic engineering. But there are also some very concerning applications of genetic engineering. Today, people talk about using this technology to correct genetic diseases. That means going into the DNA, into the genetic blueprint of an individual and changing it. That's a big step to take. That change is something that not only influences that person, but every individual with their children, and their children's children, and on like that. And if any mistake is made, that mistake is transmitted into future generations. Essentially, you've created a new genetic disease. Now, they're also talking about using this to, for genetic improvement, to create children that run faster, jump higher, are, have higher IQs, all these sorts of things. This is the intention, but in fact, the reality is that such manipulations create huge risks of new genetic diseases that could plague humanity for, for all generations to come. So this is an application of genetic engineering of biotechnology that simply is in contradiction to IR Day. Similarly, uh, they talk about engineering livestock, for instance, creating fish that grow much more quickly and much more lar and much larger, uh, and also engineering food crops. Here in India, in the last year, we've had a big battle about a genetically engineered eggplant, BT Brinjal. And I congratulate India for taking the wise step of saying no to this genetically engineered crop. It's very risky, very problematic. 
Tomorrow I will be talking in more detail in a session tomorrow afternoon on particularly the hazards of genetic engineering to Ayurveda. These are very significant, both in terms of disrupting the natural balance and the natural mess of Ayurveda, but they, that it also has uh, even deeper risks. And so we'll talk about that tomorrow, but now I'd like to talk about the good side of biotechnology, how we can use this Western science to actually benefit in advance Ayurveda. And in a way, this is uh, almost a contradictory idea, because in fact, the paradigm of Ayurveda is a paradigm based on totality, wholeness, on that field of uh, pure consciousness, of Brahman, that is at the basis of all of life. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a paradigm that's based on the subjective approach to knowledge that has come from the Vedic tradition of uh, your beautiful country. Now, biotechnology, modern biotechnology, comes from a very different tradition, not a subjective tradition as with Ayurveda, but an objective tradition, a tradition that is um, uh, using objective, scientific, uh, is isolated experimental approaches to um, really understand uh, the world around us uh, as well. And so in a certain sense, these two paradigms are completely separate and independent and uh, to a certain extent uh, not compatible. Each has its own internal integrity we're talking about Ayurvedic approach to health and the Western approach to medicine, which has a certain integrity, although it's still a hit or miss trial and error technology at this point. So, but we're going to ask the question, but let's pose it this way, that in today's world, this Western scientific mindset, paradigm, is quite broad and widely, um, widely used. And the question is, can we use this paradigm, can we use knowledge of this paradigm to bring Ayurveda out and to communicate Ayurveda to the world, enable people to understand Ayurveda more effectively? And I believe that the case is there, that can be said, made, that in fact this is the case. In particular, there are three things that I feel can be useful uh, from modern biotechnology. The first is DNA fingerprint analysis. And this is something that we do in our laboratories and is uh, a tool that we're very interested in applying to um, authentic uh, authentication of Ayurvedic herbs um, and medicinal plants. Uh, with DNA fingerprinting, you can clearly identify the species and the variety of a specific plant. In fact, you can actually differentiate uh, individuals, whether it's uh, plants or animals or human beings, in a very precise way, down to the level of dis distinguishing you from your brother or sister very precise differentiation. In the same way, you can not only identify that this is, um, this is ashwagandha, but you could identify which, which strain of ashwagandha it is. And you could probably, you can very likely differentiate ashwagandha that's produced in Uttar Pradesh from ashwagandha that's produced in Karnataka, simply because the lines will be different. The interesting thing is that we are well aware that some lines, some varieties, are going to be more potent as Ayurvedic medicinals. And using DNA fingerprint, we can actually, through some research, be able to identify those varieties that are most potent. We might even be able to differentiate varieties that are more useful for one disease and for another. So there's some interesting things to be done there. 
And that's, uh, that, uh, there are also quality control applications that are useful here. For instance, um, uh, if you are purchasing herbs, you're, you're the purchaser, the procurement person at a very large Ayurvedic uh, corporation, manufacturer, uh, you might find that uh, someone is giving you an herb that you're, you're not sure whether it's the correct herb or not. You can do a DNA fingerprint analysis and identify very clearly and definitively, is this the correct species or not, or the correct even variety. So DNA fingerprint analysis is a very powerful research tool in IRA for uh, developing future, um, identifying more effective um, or powerful or potent varieties. And it's also a very useful quality control element as well. Metabolomics is another technology that comes from modern biotechnology. Metabolomics is one of those fancy words that means something very simple. It's simply looking at the metabolites within a plant in a very comprehensive and holistic way, and a quantitative way. And there are now um, uh, methodologies and technologies available for doing this in a very efficient, very precise, and very quantitative and rapid way. And so this can again be useful for looking at the freshness of the herb for quality control. You can use this for looking at freshness, for the level of marker compounds that indicate potency of the herb. Obviously, um, for IRVA, we're not looking for active ingredients, but you can use certain compounds as markers for the freshness, potency, quality of a certain batch of herb. So that's useful. Another thing that is very useful is what's called marker-assisted breeding. Um, looking to the future, we have a a very exciting challenge ahead of us in the field of Ayurveda. And that is that Ayurveda is expanding its horizons to really encompass the whole world. I'm from America, and I see in this room people from every area of the world, from Europe, from, uh, from Asia, from, I think there's somebody here from South America, from Africa, from every area of the world, Ayurveda is becoming known as a powerful system for creating health and wholeness. And the challenge is, it's a very exciting one, but it's a big challenge. Huh. If we're going to supply medicines to the whole world, medicinal plants, medicinal preparations, Ayurvedic preparations, where are we going to get enough of those herbs to fulfill the needs of everyone in the world? It's challenge enough to serve India alone. But if we were to simply say, well, we're going to continue wild harvesting these things, what we would discover is that within a few short decades, many of the herbs, many of the plants that are so important to Ayurveda that are currently only available in the wild will be extinct. So we must develop methods for cultivating these plants, probably not monoculture, but silviculture or other approaches that allow you to uh, allow these plants to be produced in a way that they maintain their potency, maintain their efficacy as, um, as um, medicinal herbs, and yet can be produced in much larger amounts. And a few things will be needed for that. These DNA fingerprinting and metabolomics can be used as quality assurance to verify and assure potency and quality of the herbs. Marker-assisted breeding can be used to actually to um, to uh, actually breed varieties that are certain to have the levels of potency that we're interested in. So what I've done here is to talk briefly about how we can use 
these uh, uh, tools of modern biotechnology not at the core of IRA, but around the edges. Uh, we can use the Western objective approach to support the holistic Vedic approach that we find in IRA. We don't want to interfere with the core of that Ayurvedic paradigm and introduce uh, objective approaches directly into that because that would disrupt the wholeness of that, those approaches. But we certainly can use these objective approaches to support and assure the quality and efficacy of Ayurvedic medicinal plants going forward. Thank you very much.